Today, we're talking about nothing much of substance because why should I? I don't get paid as much as these Fox News hosts do, and they certainly aren't adding much value to any productive conversation. But let's be fair, these are morning show clips. Morning shows are supposed to be light, they're fun, they're easy to listen to while you're getting dressed in the morning before you go out and do whatever it is you're going to do that day. They're not supposed to be the heaviest, most austere news programming. You're supposed to laugh with the hosts, not necessarily at them. I just, I, honestly, <laughs> I've sat here and listened to you guys go back and forth. Have you? <laughs> it was... It's like listening to you guys talk to sports. I'm so uninterested in this. I just find it so but this is boring. But this is what we do in the morning show. We, we, we Did you need socialism I wrapped don't... into it somehow? <laughs> if I said it was socialist, you if would have gotten the in on it. If the did it, then I would. If, if there was a communist plot behind this. What if I tell you this? I would have. China is kidnapping babies and make them work in mines to get the clocks back at a certain time so they'll all turn us into socialist drones controlled by the WEF. <laughs> Now you're in? I'm in. <laughs> but it's in these moments of levity when you can really gleam quite a bit of insight into people based on the things that they find amusing. A sense of humor is a very personal thing, of course. Humor comes in all shapes and sizes. It's largely shaped by our own lived experiences, though. And that said, it's constantly evolving. It's possible to see the humor in something while also recognizing that it's an important or serious matter. And as much as we like to think better of ourselves, we've all laughed at things or made jokes about things in the past that maybe we shouldn't have. So first, we've got Rachel Campos Duffy ragging on her co-hosts about how boring and uninteresting they are. They were discussing daylight savings time, which in a weird way, is actually kind of more interesting as a discussion topic than it has any business being, but it is more than understandable that some people might find it boring and tedious. Still, it's probably not great for a topical and timely discussion to be called boring while it's actively being discussed on the air. That aside, the more interesting part came after her comment when, in a moment of Fox News self-awareness, Will Kane asked her, if I had said it was socialist, would you have got in on it? And that was a joke and it was a funny one because it got everyone on that couch laughing. He went on to say, what if I tell you this, China is kidnapping babies and making them work in mines to set the clocks back. Now you're in? Okay, so another joke, really good morning show banter. And I realize that I'm being a bit of a wet blanket by overanalyzing jokes. I get that. I promise I'm a lot of fun at parties. But as I said, you can learn a lot about people by the things that they find funny. Every one of those hosts on that couch in laughing was acknowledging the sensationalism that drives modern mainstream news media. And they were also acknowledging their role in perpetuating that model of media. See all these scores on how our kids are doing on these on these you know national tests and history is very bad. We need to give these tests to the teachers. I'm just very curious. I thought they did uh, <laughs> before they got their teacher no, certificate. Think, no, because they all get licensed through these Marxist teaching schools that we have inside of all of these universities. Um, that's also why you have teachers that turn out like that, that have no idea about American history. They don't care about it. They get hired by a classical academy, um, a charter school where parents are supposedly pulling their kids out of public school to get a better education. Um, and, and here's what they get. So just always be alert. So let's move on real quick to another example before we discuss. Over on Fox and Friends, the hosts were discussing the Oscars. I didn't watch them, but I did see the highlights. Kaylee McEnany said that there were some, quote, scantily clad women there. And Brian Kilmeade noticed, because he is such a diligent reporter, that John Cena, who presented the award for best costume design completely naked, quote, has got a very good build, and he was willing to shave his body. The average there American were some scantily Seriously. clad women too. Carly Shimkus showed me some pictures. They are there were some. Just Google it. Right, wow. uh, there was. So yeah. John Cena, you know, he's got a very good build, and he was willing to shave his body, and he wanted everyone to know. <laughs> wow, that's a lot. I mean, I wasn't looking that closely. Thank yes. you. I'm a reporter. Uh, <laughs> Fine, I agree with everything Brian Kilmeade said. But Kaylee, clutching her pearls at scantily clad women at a Hollywood event, she's reinforcing the conservative ideal of conservative dress on a conservative channel that's primarily watched by older conservative adults. Now, I grew up in a time when the fashion police was a big deal. It was a show starring Joan Rivers on the E! Network, I think. That show would have never lasted past the pilot in today's social climate, and I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I laughed at a lot of the jokes that were told on that show at the time that they aired, but looking back, they really didn't age well. 
Now, I'm not saying that people are above being ridiculed for doing or saying ridiculous things, but I think that the culture, for the most part, has evolved past the idea that there is a way, a set standard way to do things or to live a life. Yes, there are trends in fashion and pop culture and media, whatever, but for the most part, people are technically free to live and express themselves in a way that they feel the most comfortable. But the people on Fox News and its viewers are notable exceptions to that kind of accepting, anything goes, who cares as long as you're not hurting anyone, laissez-faire sort of lifestyles because a man wearing nail polish is somehow so deeply and personally offensive to them. Where most people might notice a man wearing nail polish and at worst think, well, it's not for me, but whatever, Fox News will take the opportunity to soapbox on behalf of preserving masculinity. And the criticism is that the left is actually intolerant because we apparently hate everything about conservatives. Now, I can't speak for everyone on the left. Some people on the left, despite presumably having good intentions, can be mean. Maybe they lose the plot for a bit. Maybe their passion gets the best of them. I don't know. But leftists aren't these beacons of tolerance, and I don't think we've ever sold ourselves as such. We're very intolerant, ironically, of intolerance. We don't like that conservatives say, for example, that they are supposedly okay with the LGBTQ community as long as their lifestyle isn't being flaunted in public. Meanwhile, I can drive down any freeway in Houston and see a billboard about Jesus. Meanwhile, I've had my rights taken away as a woman in Texas because of religious extremists who follow a religion that I don't. Meanwhile, children in schools are literally physically being endangered, not emotionally or spiritually endangered, which conservatives will tell you is just as bad, if not worse, by gun violence. But nothing is being done about it because conservatives have to have their guns. But accepting a child for whoever they are is apparently just as damaging to them as a gun. Let's not even mention the student that was just killed in school for being trans. Conservative beliefs are harmful to people, especially when they're being touted as a holier-than-thou value system, especially when they're used as justification to hate or discriminate against people. Rhetoric on Fox News, like the anti-China rhetoric in this light-hearted morning show clip, has led to hate crimes against Asian people. Disparaging socialism in all forms, conflating it with communism, and denouncing any social welfare programs as handouts not only deliberately misinforms the public, but it hurts everyday Americans who might benefit from those types of programs. So all jokes aside, I'm glad that these Fox News hosts are having a good time because I wish everyone would have as good of a time while working. I just don't like that their good time comes pointedly at someone else's expense. All right, that's it for me. If you got anything out of this, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check out my podcast, Modern Context. Thanks.